Hey guys, it's Phase One. Welcome to another episode of The Uplink, where we cover Star Citizen news from the previous week. Before we move forward, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreons and channel members. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. Last week's episode of Inside Star Citizen was regarding the progress of all pre 18 features they previously showcased on ISC and their progress thus far in preparation for the 318 release and beyond. First, we'll start off with rivers the visual quality of rivers have been added to look much better the most significant change is the newly added cliff spawn points previously they had steep edges in the terrain but adding cliff meshes along the edges of the terrain in relation to the river allows them to look much better and believable. more splines have been added to each river edge to dictate their height in relation to the river resulting in much more cleaner looking river edges in addition to this, the tech artists have been building out more tools to allow for easier distribution of better looking rivers. Up next is the PTV Arena Racetrack. They've been bug fixing the PTV Racetrack and blocked off areas where players could leave the track. Potential shortcuts have been removed. When the buggies are destroyed, they will respawn at a specific area where players can retreat. Security Post Korea Update They continue to add visual updates to SPK. In 318, if you get a crime stat 1 or 2, the game will permit you to enter space stations and landing zones to allow you to pay off your crime. NPC security will not be hostile towards you, but will remind you to pay off your fine. Fine kiosks will also allow you to surrender to law enforcement for a 20% reduced sentence. They also spoke about prisons. Cluster has been updated. AI NPCs are now walking around the mining caves with loot on them. They've added the black spot where you can get a mission from the outside. Players will need to figure out how to get to it. They've also made it more difficult to leave that area. As it pertains to the Daymar crash site, they've been polishing the site. They've added some AI and increased the mission difficulty associated with the site. They've added three mission types for the site, which are kill specific, kill all, and delivery missions. They also want to add the Sand Nomads in a future PAT release. In regards to CH of Orison, they'll be adding separate missions on various islands of the CH of Orison. These missions are available when the CH of Orison dynamic event is not active. With Hall Scraping in 318, the difference between the Reclaimer and the Vulture is available cargo space. The significant difference will come when salvage munching is added in a future release. The scrapper can be used offensively but can only be effective if the target shield is deactivated. The initial repair mechanic cannot replace a broken piece or a damaged component. You can only repair your hull to restore health points to a certain point. An important addition is there will be harvestable derelicts for salvage ships to find and salvage for profit. They can find them by scanning. This was a big concern for me, but I'm glad they're actually added this. Last week's Star Citizen Live was the Bot Whisperer. They lightly touched on what subsumption is, and for those that are new, this is a system that controls the AI behavior in the game. They spoke about optimization to reduce load on the servers, which result in improved player experience. Some of these are spawn closets and even tick frequency rates for NPC AI further away from you would be lower as opposed to NPCs closer to you. In other news, all backers will be getting free goodies packs from CitizenCon 2952 when CitizenCon goes live on October 8, 2022. Just know that distribution of these will take time for them to get to everyone. Last week's sneak peek is a cool looking ship weapon. Do you know what weapon manufacturer this belongs to? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, I got more videos like this. I'll see you on the next one.